Hello friends, I'm glad that you're here with me today for this time of meditation and uh, prayer and, and praise. So let us begin with our opening words. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Since we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that Christ has been raised from death and will never die again. Death will no longer rule over him. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Before we know what to ask, O God, you are fashioning out of your love everything we can need. Today give us courage to witness to your wondrous love and to share in your work which you have given us as disciples of Jesus Christ, our servant Lord. Amen. Our hymn today is the uh, the thanksgiving hymn come ye thankful people come i'm going to sing all four verses so just hang in with me here we go mm -hmm. come ye thankful people come raise the song of harvest home all is safely gathered in ere the winter storms begin. God our Maker doth provide for our wants to be supplied. Come to God's own temple, come, raise the song of harvest home. All the world is God's own field, fruit unto God's praise to yield. Wheat and tares together sown, unto joy or sorrow grown. First the blade and then the ear, then the full corn shall appear. Lord of harvest, grant that we wholesome grain and pure may be. For the Lord our God shall come and shall take the harvest home. From each field shall in that day all offenses purge away. Give the angels charge at last, in the fire the tares to cast, but the fruitful ears to store in God's garner evermore. Even so, Lord, quickly come to thy final harvest home. Gather thou thy people in, free from sorrow, free from sin. There forever purified in thy presence to abide. Come with all thine angels, come, raise the glorious harvest home. Now friends, uh, our scripture for today is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Uh, this is the next passage that follows last week's passage from chapter 4 of 1 Thessalonians. Listen to the word of God. Now concerning the times and seasons, brothers, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. You yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that, day to, for that day to surprise you like a thief. But you are all children of light and children of the day. 
we are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not, not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be, so, be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has, dot, has, for God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live in him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. May the Lord add his blessings to this reading of his holy scripture. As I said, this is the passage that follows last week's passage which had to do with the with the whole rapture image the idea that uh, uh, the dead in Christ when Christ returns uh, the dead in Christ will rise first and then we who are alive who are left as it says will join them all in the air uh, and and I guess the sort of then the idea is we all go to heaven together um, but this passage this follow-up passage while it sounds some of the same themes is is somewhat different and I think it's different in, the, different in the sense that we're called to do something in that between times, in that time when we're waiting. We're not called just, just to sit and wait. Uh, the, the image of daylight and nighttime. In the daylight you do things, at nighttime you sleep. You know? So, so in the daytime we have to be doing something, we have to be busy, we have to be part of what God wants to have done. We just can't go about and do everything that we want to do. We have to have a plan, we have to have a purpose, we have to do something that God calls us to do. Uh, I wanted to read a couple of things to you today uh, because I think they, they tell that story very well about what we're, what we're supposed to be about. Uh, the first one, these are both coming from a book called Spiritual Literacy. Um, this couple, Frederick and Marianne Brusat, uh, I don't know if I said that name right, but uh, they gathered up from a, a wide variety of sources words that speak to us, that, that speak to us not just spiritually in the sense of Oh boy, doesn't that make me feel good? Doesn't that make me feel special? But uh, also encouraging us to act, to live in a spiritual fashion, a, a fashion in which God is with us and enlivening us and encouraging us to do things. So this first one comes from, uh, is from a, a book called Legacy of the Heart by Wayne Muller. And it is very, quite short. Uh, the practice of loving kindness. The practice of loving kindness must, must find, find its root deep within us. The story is told that Mohandas Gandhi once settled in a village and at once began serving the needs of the villagers who lived there. A friend inquired if Gandhi's objectives in serving the poor were purely humanitarian. Gandhi replied, not at all. I am here to serve no one else but myself to find my own self-realization through the service of these village folk. As Gandhi wisely points out, even as we serve others, we are working on ourselves. Every act, every word, every gesture of genuine compassion naturally nourishes our hearts as well. It is not a question of who is healed first. When we attend to ourselves with compassion and mercy, more healing is made available for others. And when we serve others in an open and with an open and generous heart, great healing comes to us. It's not an either-or situation, it's a both-and. When we reach out in compassion and offer hope and care to others, then we too are strengthened and healed and draw closer to God, even as we bring others closer. The other, the other is a... Uh, comes from, from uh, Henry Nouwen. Henry Nouwen is one of my favorite people, a Roman Catholic priest uh, who was a, a writer, a preacher, a college professor, uh, a missionary, and in his last years worked at, uh, at, at it's called Daybreak in Toronto. It's part, part of what's called the L'Arche Community. Uh, 
here, 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 here we go, I got it now. The joy that compassion brings is one of the best kept secrets of humanity. It is a secret known only to a very few people, a secret that thus has to be, be rediscovered over and over again. Dr. Nowen wrote, I have had a few glimpses of it. When I came to Daybreak, a community with people who have mental disabilities, I was asked to spend a few hours with Adam, one of the handicapped members of the community. Each morning I had to get him out of bed, give him a bath, shave him, brush his teeth, comb his hair, dress him, walk him to, walk him to the kitchen, give him his breakfast, and bringing, bring him to the place where he spends his day. During the first few weeks I was mostly afraid, always worrying that I would do something wrong or that he would have an epileptic seizure. But gradually I relaxed and started to enjoy our daily routine. As the weeks passed by, I discovered how I had come to look forward to my two hours with Adam. Whenever I thought of him during the day, I experienced gratitude for having him as my friend. Even though he couldn't speak or even give a sign of recognition, there was real love between us. My time with Adam had become the most precious time of the day. When a visiting friend asked me one day, couldn't you spend your time better than working with this handicapped man? Was it for this type of work that you got all your education? I realized that I couldn't explain to him the joy that Adam brought me. He had to discover that for himself. It seems to me that, that our service to each other, whether it's actually doing something for someone, whether it's thinking about them and praying for them, is the most important thing we can do for each other, the most important way we can care for each other every day. Uh, that is what changes our lives. That is what prepares us and gives us these things that, that God wants us to have, the breastplate of faith and love, the hope of salvation. That is how you gather up those things. That is how you gather those things to live a faithful life. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Bless us, O Lord, in all we think and do, seeking to know the light of your truth and feeling your love. The world is, is, is too much with us. Help us to get nearer to the things and the thoughts that do not die. You have promised that you will hear and answer the prayers of your children. Watch over us at all times and keep us for your kingdom. Now I would like to ask everyone to, to remember those closest to them, to think of your family, your spouse, your children, your parents, those a little further out from you in that outer circle sort of a family or close friends. When you have done that, try to think of someone further away. Not further away in distance or in time, but further away in, in your thinking. Think of someone that you have heard about on the radio or on television. Someone that uh, is just a name or a, a face to you, but for whom you pray, for whom you might want to think for a moment today about, and ask God to bless that person, to strengthen that person, to, to help that person to share their life with someone else, even as we're trying to share our lives this day. Lord, we pray that for each of these people that we lift up, that we remember in our prayers, that you would bless and guide them as you, as we, as you promised to bless and guide us. Lord, remind us that it is in the things that we do that show our love, it is the way that we receive the gifts to us that we also show our love and our gratitude and our hope 
and our faith. Almighty God, from whom every good prayer comes, deliver us when we draw near to you from coldness of heart and wanderings of mind, that with steadfast thought and kindled desire we may praise you in the faith and spirit of Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray in the name of Christ our Lord who taught us to pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to close today, friends, with the, with the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Uh, let me get the note here. Mm -hmm. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Before our dismissal today, I hope you noticed over my shoulder the the Thanksgiving theme, the theme of gratitude, uh, all the gifts gathered together on the, on the table of God. Uh, we want to thank Lynn Gollin for providing that. Now hear these words. May we continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. The Lord's name be praised. Amen. Thank you for being, me, being with me, friends. Go with God.